Hello everybody and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. In today's video we're going to be doing a recreation of perhaps the craziest Soviet design ever. This is the N1 MOK and is a fully reusable SSTO rocket contraption thing and we are we're going to be using it to rescue a Kerbal that I have unfortunately stranded on the MUN. So let's Get straight into the build time lap. So, uh, to start out with the construction of this thing, we're going to start out by constructing the plane that is located on top of the uh, on top of the on top of the rocket. So, there is an there is extremely little information about the uh, the actual rocket itself. There's literally like a, a four sentence article on astronautics about it. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check that out. Uh, and uh, there's there's one picture basically. One in it. Yeah, there's one picture of it, which I'll put on screen right now so you guys can kind of see what it is. It's an extremely low resolution picture. It's tiny. It's blurry. It's bad, but that's what it is. So um, that's what we're making. So there is the top space plane thing. We have literally no information on. The only information we have is about it, it, it's uh, that picture we have. So uh, the plane is not part of the launch vehicle. The uh, plane is a uh, payload, basically. So the launch vehicle will is an SSTO. It, it's a yeah, single stage to orbit. It'll take this plane to orbit, then the launch vehicle will land itself back on Kerbin, and this, this thing is what's going to actually fly out to the MUN and rescue our, our Kerbal. So yeah, well, this thing is intended, I believe it was supposed to be a resupply vehicle um, to the MKBS station um, that was never built, obviously. Um, the SSTO was in theory able to carry 90 tons to orbit, although that seems incredibly optimistic. A lot of things seem incredibly optimistic. This thing is actually a derivative of the derivative of the N1. I've uh, been doing a lot of N1 videos. I've kind of gone down the rabbit hole of finding just all these Soviet, these Soviet, some of the Soviet designs are just insane. And well, that make great Kerbal videos, right? So yeah, that is going to be the plane basically completed, and then we can uh, crossfade over to the vehicle assembly building where we can start working on the rocket. Um, the rocket itself is powered by, yeah, it's, it's an N1 bottom stage basically. So if you look uh, at the, I'll put the uh, graphic on screen uh, once more, um, you can see the, um, the, the core stage is basically an N1 block A or bottom stage. Um, so that's that's basically what it is. It's a modified N1 bottom stage, which is uses a modified NK33 engine or 16 modified NK33 engines. Um, it's basically nothing like the N1. The N1 used NK15 engines, I believe, or 16. I can't remember the exact number. Um, but yeah, uh, it it yeah, uh, and it's uh, it's powered by RP1 and or our um, Karolox, basically, not RP1, because the Soviets used a different type of, a, yeah, but basically, yeah, that's what they, that's what it was powered by, and, and the original N1 third bottom stage had 30 engines, so this one has 16 modified NK33 engines, so the modified, an NK33 is a um, Karolox engine, the modified version is a Hydrolox, so basically, they're changing the fuel type, they're basically cutting the number of engines in half. This thing, it's barely an N1, but it's technically what they call it. So I'm going to be building the engine now. I'm using skippers um, uh, to uh, use make be the NK33s. So, uh, the, yeah, so that's kind of ridiculous enough and impractical and dumb. But the really dumb part is like those four side core th booster things that are on the thing, um, that are on the, uh, on the rocket itself. Now, those four side core boosters... Um, actually are, they, well, obviously they stay attached, but they have, um, they, there are air powered engines on the bottom of them. They use a, um, um, a liquid air cycle engine, which basically what that does is it uses, it runs fuel through the engine, um, to help cool the air that comes into the, so it's like a jet rocket hybrid. So it like cools the air and it makes the air liquefy and then it can combust the air. So it's like basically turning intake air into rocket fuel. It's really cool. Um, never built, obviously, because it's ridiculously hard to do. Um, obviously, because no one's ever done it before. So, you know, so now we're building that. So, yeah, so the real, there is no, obviously, liquid air cycle engine in KSP. So I'm just going to use the rapier. Um, yeah, the rapier. Uh, I don't know what else I would use. So it's jet engine, basically, is what I'm going to be putting at the bottom of these. Um, this thing was a really big pain to design because it has a the thrust weight ratio sorry, is really low on it um, with the skippers, um, but also the delta V is extremely close because we have to land it. Uh, we have to get into this into orbit and then land the booster or the rocket basically back down to 
the KSC. So Delta V is extremely tight. Like, because the problem is if I add fuel, then we don't have enough thrust to get in the air, right? But if I don't add fuel and we can, we have enough thrust, then we don't have enough thrust to be, get back down. So it's a, it's a bit of a tricky one. We did have to um, remove all the fuel from the, uh, from the plane or the space plane or whatever um, during the launch. It's going to have to get refueled in orbit. But yeah, that was the only way it was really possible. Um, and that is basically going to bring us to the end of the build time lapse. There's one weird thing you'll see I'm building right now at the bottom of the... Uh, not right now, but you'll, in just a second here, you'll see when we do a little quick uh, quick little cross void. Um, you'll see it's... um. It's like a weird, it kind of looks like an arrow spike, but I really don't know what it is. It doesn't extend all the way down to the bottom, I don't believe. So it's not really like an extra landing. Like, it could be, I'm not, maybe I'm not looking at it right. But either way, um, that's going to be the end of the build time lapse. We can now cross fade over to the launch. And here is our really, really ridiculous <laughs> SSTO thing that the Soviets thought would be anything resembling a good idea. Um, but hey, you know what? They they can I don't know they can think. But here we go. We have just fired up the engines and it is just crawling, crawling off the pad. I'll speed up the footage in a second, but I just want to show about show how ridiculously slow this thing is. We're in rocket mode with the rapiers right now. We switch it over to air breathing mode when we hit five meters a second. Um, as you can see, we do right about there. And now we can get uh, get it into two times speed. And this is still really slow. I want to keep the time lapse just a little bit slower just to really show how how incredibly slow this thing is. Um, the thing with SSTO though, SSTOs though is because you don't stage them. Um, they obviously have the same amount of thrust at sea level as they do um, in, in a vacuum. Well, not really, but you know, generally similar thrust. So the thing is really slow, but it ends up going really, really, really fast. Um, <laughs> Or it has really high acceleration once we get to the upper parts of the atmosphere when it's burned away all its fuel. Like we've already burned like a third of our fuel, and we're at three kilometers. So, yeah, this thing, this thing definitely, definitely doesn't rocket into, rocket into orbit. That was not good. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So we're ascending now, doing a nice gravity turn. And while we're doing that, I would like to quickly, if you are enjoying the video, you know there is a subscribe button. Um, yeah, uh, we're doing. Yeah, uh, if you, you know, you don't know if I could do like a quick five-second pitch. You know, we do. KSP videos if you just watch the channel. KSP videos, daily live streams we try to do. Um, actually, one of the um, one of the, the Kerbal were rescuing someone who got stranded during a live stream. So, hey, I guess it's all connecting back. And, hey, there's a Discord. We're try I'm trying to get to 1,000 people on the Discord. We have about 740 people right now. I know that's a ways until a thousand. We have a ways away. We are a ways away until 1,000. But, hey, I can dream. And, uh, yeah, thank you all very much for 3,000 subscribers. I don't know if I said that in the video. And everyone who liked, comment, you guys are all great. I, I guess I'll, I'll keep the plugs to a minimum here. So, yeah, just thank you. And subscribe on Discord. Subscribe, you know, you know, you know, you know. Okay, <laughs> either way. So now we are just getting to the uh, final part of our ascent where we can actually fly pretty darn flat here and accelerate ourselves to... Uh, to orbital velocity. We don't really have to worry about um, trying to not fall back down to Kerbin or run out of, you know, TWR, because we have a lot of TWR. You can see we're pulling of quite a few Gs here uh, on our on our ascent, but there we go. We can cut our engine. We are going to an extremely low orbit just so we can, like, del the Delta V to land, we barely have any fuel to land with, like, so... Um, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to do like the the most minimal orbit possible, and we're getting into like a 71 by 71 kilometer orbit. So uh, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. But here we are, welcome to orbit. We can go ahead and stage away the plane, and we can crossfade to the booster as it gets ready to do its deorbit burn and landing. This is. Uh, this is the fun bit, isn't it, right? Where the booster comes back to the to the KSC, or not really to the KSC. This booster is really weird, as it uh, as it comes into land. You'll see in a in a in a bit here as we uh, as we just descend through about sixty ish kilometers. Um, it, it it's pretty much stable right now, but once we get to the lower parts of the atmosphere, the stability kind of dies, and then it mysteriously you'll see what happens. So. We come down 40 kilometers, and here we go. It just immediately spins out. It looks like it's going to come in forward, which is obviously not what you want to do because, you know, we're landing with engines, right? Um, so, yeah, it, it's doing this weird stuff, and then it pitches, like, completely forward for some reason. I really don't even understand. And then it magically just flips back, back upright. So that's kind of weird, but, hey, uh, I'm not complaining. You know, I was making a quick save just in case. I, I actually don't need to use it, so that's good. 
All right, we're coming down through about five kilometers. Now, I'm trying to uh, not quite point retrograde. I'm trying to do some sort of aerodynamic braking to slow the thing down a little bit, uh, which actually does work here. We get down to about 180 meters a second, and then around at one kilometer, we can relight the engines and bring her in for a nice, a nice little landing. Here we go. We don't even need that much thrust because with, not, with, with the amount of fuel we have, we have a... Uh, we have more than enough thrust to land it with, so, and, oh, oh, back up again, oh, really back up again, and touchdown with, like, <laughs> less than about 20 meters a second to spare, so, yeah, really kind of, kind of, yeah, kind of cutting it close there, but, uh, here is our refueling craft, and what other than a starship to refuel us with, that's basically what I always use to refuel, because, hey, it's cool, and starship is, like, the orbital refueling thing, so, uh, yeah. Uh, let's get the two docked together and we can get the thing refueled. And now uh, we're actually going to come... You're invited to another episode of I don't know how to dock. Or I screw up my dockings. So I need to get this um, advanced grabbing unit to basically grab anywhere because I forgot to put a docking port on the plane. So yeah, we are just... Uh, well, that's not weird, but uh, yeah, we're just... Uh, we're d d doing a d totally normal docking. This seems perfectly normal. And... Oh, ooh... Ooh, docking! Yay! And then we can get the fuel transferred over to the uh, to the plane, and then we can have a good time, good time, and head out to the Mon and rescue rescue our very high nandy dandy handy Kerbal guy, who's pretty cool. Um, one of my <laughs> my Kerbal. This is actually if, um, uh, if you guys don't, we obviously don't know. I mean, you, I don't think you've never even seen the Kerbal. It's K Space Kerman. If you don't know who uh, K Space is, he's one of my Discord mods. And during a stream, he was like, "Make my, make my Kerbal a name. Make me make me a Kerbal." He asked me a bunch of times, and finally, I'm like, "All right, I'll make you a Kerbal." And what I've been doing on these streams, I've been trying to speed run Mun missions recently. That's what I've been doing, um, like trying to get to the Mun and back as quickly as possible. And one of the, one of the one of the missions did not exactly work out. I must have forgot to revert flight or something. So K Space Kerman is yeah, very much stuck on the mun with a crashed rocket. So, yeah. Um, hey, you know K K, this is this is for you. I'm rescuing your ker Kerbal. Um, anyway, we deployed the solar panel. Now we can fire uh, our engine to get there. Our engine is slightly offset. I don't know if you saw me do that in the build time last, but I have to lower it down a little bit because those uh, wings add quite a bit of weight low down to the vehicle. So to keep the center of thrust and the center of mass lined up, we lowered the engine a little bit. But uh, there we go. There is our translunar injection complete, and now we can get ourselves onto an elliptical-ish orbit to uh, head out to the Mon and rescue our Kerbal. Because Kerbal's not an equatorial place, so we have to kind of get change our uh, in inclination here. Did I say, I don't remember I said, eccentric? Oh, I don't know. Either way, uh, point is we're coming in. I don't know if I said something wrong. If I did, let me know in the comments. You guys you guys are pretty good at letting me know I screw stuff up, which is pretty often, so you guys don't have a pretty hard job. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, criticism is welcome. I'm not trying to say something like, oh, it's too mean. There are too many meanies. No. Eh, it's fine, whatever you say. So here we go, we can um, get ourselves targeted the Kerbal, and there you can go kind of hanging out in the in the crater there. Now, we have a lot of Delta V here, so we can kind of be a little bit liberal with our burning here, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so here we go, we can we kind of fairly accurately target the uh, target the place. We can kind of do like almost like a starship flip there, but uh, here we go, landing gear down. And here here we go, we've, we've made it. You can see the Kerbal command pod and his broken rocket and hey we've landed nice nice little landing this uh yeah nothing broke which is all all nice and dandy here so we can now go ahead and get uh switched over to there's k space kerman with an extra space between his name i guess k space k space you know we all like spaces right and here he goes can re we can embark on the uh on the shuttle or the plane and oh no it's full i accidentally brought four kerbals oh that's not good I guess we can just leave this one behind. K, K Space Kermit is much more important, obviously. Uh, yeah, seems legit. We can just, I guess... Well, that wasn't really a very productive mission, was it? <laughs> we now still have a Kerbal. Well, that's an unimportant Kerbal. Maybe we'll just let him... Let him... I don't know. Hang out for a while until another rescue mission comes. But now we can throttle the Wolfhound engine back up and get back into the air and head back to lovely Dovely Kerbin. Now, uh, yeah, here we go. Almost running into the side of the crater because I kind of flipped over too much. But uh, either way, um, <laughs> we can we can power our way out of here and get uh, get set up on a return trajectory to to the nice planet where the Kerbals are. I was trying to say I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, 
here we go. So uh, yeah, we'll just we're just finishing up. We're gonna all right, we're gonna make a maneuver node to get ourselves into a circular orbit around the moon. Then we're gonna make another maneuver node to get ourselves back to Kerbin, and then we are going to do a few error break passes around Kerbin so we can get ourselves captured because I want to kind of semi accurately target the. KSC. This thing, uh, plane, is kind of a d d pain to fly. It really doesn't like to be stable, and it's not like it has a, it's a, it has a balancing issue. Like it's just d not a fan of being stable. You know how some planes are just, just mean like that. I guess maybe I did some. I probably did like 15 things wrong. And SAS2 is not, I'm not very, not very cooperative with this plane. We are just doing a quick inclination change, and then we can come back in to Kerbin. It's actually good that we have a little bit of extra fuel uh, remaining because we can pump it to the kind of back. We don't want to pump it all the way back, pretty much the back, because if it has no fuel, um, the center of uh, mass is way too far forward. Um, another thing has major issues, uh, like pitching up and stuff, but uh, here we go. Air brake pass number one completed, and now we can come around for round number two here, and there is aer uh, aero brake pass number two. Uh, just about completed and then we can uh, we have our perhaps at about uh, just over 80 kilometers and we can circularize We'll do a little bit of burn to circularize um, and then we'll deorbit ourselves uh, once we once we get into a nice area over over the space center So there we go Engines fired we are now deorbited and we can come back down and out for a not very subtle crossfade Because uh, I did have to reload a quick save um, because I didn't get this first try uh, surprisingly um <laughs> I don't know, who'd have thought? I'm like the greatest pilot ever, right? I can do this perfectly every time, right? But here we go. Kind of spinning out here as we can see the spinning out. Like, I don't know if that, that is really spinny, but yeah, here we go. As we come down. 314 kilometers, I have to kind of pump the fuel to the front to try and force the nose down because or else it's just too spinny. Then we pump the fuel back when you get a little bit lower. RCS on, SAS on, and there we go. We have pitched up. RCS probably didn't do much, but hey, helped a little bit. So there we go. We're not quite at the KSC, but we're, we're close enough. Kerbals can walk. <laughs> um, and then here we go. We can come down. Landing gear down. And... Hey! We... we yeah, that was a great landing, wasn't <laughs> it? Uh, Ryanair status, right? <laughs> then you can do a little bit of a kind of a drift. Do a little bit of a 180. I don't know. Kerbals wanted some excitement. And yeah, here we go. We've made it. Yay! We did it. We made it back to Kerbin. Hope, <laughs> hope no one's neck got broken on that landing. They probably did. And I'm, I'm really surprised the landing gear managed to uh, manage to survive that. But that is going to bring us to the end of the video. So I would like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please write a comment to the video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.